Hello. Just waiting to see if I'm live. <laughs> I'll try and get my picture a bit bigger. Right, let's see if I can see any comments coming through. <clears throat> Okay, I think I'm live, but I don't think anyone's watching. Oh, one person's watching. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can see where the comments show up. Um, and try and get it on my phone as well. My children were lovely and deleted <laughs> my uh, Facebook off my iPad. So it's been a bit rubbish. Can't see anything there. Right, there are 11 people watching. Can someone hit me with a comment so I can see if the comments pop up on my screen? because last time I did this they did um, and I'm just trying to see if I can find it on my phone as well but I'm really not so technical <laughs> um, right it says free craft along no that's not what I want I don't want to view the picture right here we are here we are <clears throat> oh it says something went wrong this may be due to technical error we're working to get it fixed can anyone see me? Oh, there's eight comments. Why can't I see the comments? How do I see comments? Scrolling. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Can anyone hear me? Because no one's commented if they can hear me. Um, <clears throat> just trying to... My phone is saying there's an error with the video. So I have no idea why it's not working. It might just be my phone. Um, so I just want to make sure this is all working well and then we can crack on <clears throat> okay I'm gonna try and keep an eye on the comments because they come up on the side of my computer screen so go that this is my cable for my headphones my microphone so if you see that or hear me bang this against the table I apologize it's really annoying okay so apparently you can hear me and you can see me so that's really good oh I've already caught it on there so today I wanted to do some triple layer um, card making for you um, I was planning to do my whole little intro and say hi to you with my camera on however <laughs> uh, again I'm not so good with the technology so um, I don't know how to change my cameras and flip between them so <laughs> Here's me. <laughs> Pretend you're looking at me right now when I chat to you. Oh gosh. Um, I really can't work out this whole flip the cameras and have the right kind of technology um, to do that. So, oh gosh, I think I'm all over the place with these comments again. Okay, scrolling down, there was a pinned comment and that was all I was looking at. Okay, hello everybody. <laughs> so this, that's my face. <laughs> um, if I could work my cameras, you would see my face right now, uh, but instead, you get this. <laughs> this is what's behind me as well. <laughs> so I took a picture in front of my wall and printed it out. <laughs> so yeah, this is me and technology. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to keep scrolling down to see the comments uh, because my computer doesn't want to keep those comments posted for me. Oh, I just wish the kids hadn't deleted my... Um, my Facebook off the iPad right okay so here's my face <laughs> this is what I look like if you wanted to know <laughs> when I put hair and makeup on hair and makeup well, I wear hair every day but when I put makeup on this is what I look like um, when I don't have makeup on it's not as nice um, but whatever okay so today I wanted to use this stamp set as well as some of my favorite dyes if you've watched anything that I've done on my YouTube channel or with Craft Stash, you'll know that I love layering dies. Um, so this is my box of layering dies. Um, I've got sort of all of them in here. This stays on my desk um, in one of my shelves. So I've got sort of my um, octagons with the stitches and regular octagons. I've got like the tags. These are all the layering dies that I've got. Um, and they just live on my desk ready to go because I use them in almost all my card making. So I think I've got all the shapes now. Um, they come in stitched ones. They come in um, the, it's not wavy. Wavy is not the right word. Um, scalloped. <laughs> so they come in the scalloped and then they come in the regular. 
Um, and the regular ones are nice and tight together. So that's mainly what I'm going to focus on and use today for my video because I love how they stay nice and tight together. Um, the ones with stitches, obviously they're a lot wider, so you get more of a gap between, but you can use them. So if you've got any of these kind of dies, pop them out of your stash and you can craft along with me. I have done my die cutting in advance just so that we don't waste time uh, doing that. And I didn't want to shake my desk with my Big Shot on it, so I've pre-cut everything ready to go. I'm going to use this stamp set here. Now, Craft Stash have been amazing because I said to them that this is one of my all-time favorite ones. Can I use it? Is it still in stock? Because I bought it quite a while ago. Um, and yes, they have it in stock. So if you wanted to purchase any of the dies um, from the creative range, any of the nesting dies, then you can get this die, uh, stamp set for free. I think you need to spend £20 or £30, um, something along those lines. I am sure Maria will put it in the comments for me. Um, so you have a little minimum spend and then you can get the stamp set for free that I'm using today. I chose this one because I like the fact that it's got some solid images and it's got some of the outlines. Um, hello everyone. Oh, from Canada. Um, I'm from Canada. <laughs> I'm from Edmonton, uh, but I live in the UK. My husband is from Manchester. And um, yeah, I've lived here for 13 years. So this is weird. I feel like I'm trying to have a conversation, but nobody's talking back to me. Um, right, hi, Karen. Uh, right, so I wanna use this stuff set because it's got solid images, it's got outline images. It can kind of add a bit more dimension and creativity to your project without having to overthink it and overdo it. It's also got some great little sentiments in there. Um, there's just a load, there's 25 stamps in there and they're photopolymer by the way. So I love a good photopolymer set. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of silicone sets. I just find that you have to be very selective in your ink pads. Uh, whereas with a photopolymer, you can use whatever you like. And today I'm going to primarily use the Versifying Claire inks. Um, they are really good at sticking to any kind of stamp and I really like how they um, are bright and vibrant um, and kind of go with any cardstock and any stamp. Um, I've also got a white pigment ink um, and a really, 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 really pale gray ink. This is from My Favorite Things, which I had to order from the States, but it's like super, super pale. It's almost off, just off white, which I wanted to use for maybe some background stamping if we get to our second card. So I've got one card prepped and ready to go that we're gonna do today. And if we have enough time, I'm gonna do the second one. I just have to make sure that I don't um, abandon my kids at school. <laughs> I need to make sure I go and get them. So, those are the supplies you're using. You can use a stamp platform. I'm going to use my stamp blocks today just because it's easier. But a stamp platform is quite nice because you can make sure you get a good clear stamped image. So I've got my stamps on there ready to go, uh, which I will change up in a bit. Um, and I'm wondering if I should show you, I'll show you the what we're going to make. We're going to make a slightly more simplified version and I'll show you how you can step it up. So the card we're going to make is this one here. It's got loads of beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. You've got your layers on there. Um, and so we're going to make this card and I will walk you through how to do it. Then I'll show you at the end some other variations of how you can step it up more. You can do different dyes and different ways of going about it. I'm just trying to make sure there's no more comments going on. How do we tell how many people are in here? I can't tell how many people are watching. Someone tell me in the comments because it doesn't say, it just says I'm live. Okay, so I've gone ahead. Actually, no, we're going to start from the beginning. So you get your layering stamps, stamps, layering dies. Now I need um, some kind of new die storage, <clears throat> Nicola. Um, <laughs> I've got some issues going on. Uh, the plastic is kind of going everywhere. So I need a new system here. Um, but what you want to do is get your dies out and you're going to pick out, these are the ones we're going to use. I've kind of pre-picked them out for us and got them ready. These are great because they they go really, really big. Most of them are eight by eight as the sort of maximum size um, for all of the creative range. So you've got all your dies that you could possibly need. Now, one of the things you need to bear in mind when you're getting your dies ready is to not go too close together. So you want two of each size, if that makes sense. I'll explain what I'm meaning here in a second. 
93 people watching. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> Hello, 93 people. Okay, so what you want to do is we're going to get our layers sorted for our card. So on our card, we've got what this is what I would consider one layer. So you've got your top and your back. Then you've got your top and your back and your top and your back. So there are three layers here. And that is the basic triple layer stamping kind of card where you've got your three layers, which is actually six because you have a backing layer behind them. And what you want to do, if you pick them too close together, so let's say you've got your one layer and then you want to go down to your next layer. Um, let's pretend that that one's in there you get them really close together and your stamping becomes a lot more difficult to view. So this is what happens when you stamp your image and your layers are all too close together. You really struggle to see what your image is and you really struggle to see what you've stamped. So when you space out your dies, so you take a few out in between each layer, you can see the stamping a lot more clearly, but you get that dimensional kind of effect, if that makes sense to you. So for this one, I've used my Crafter's Companion um, cardstock. It comes in a pad and it does gradual shades. So I've kind of went for the ombre look, but then you kind of lose your image because it gets a bit lost between all those layers being so tight together. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we space out our layers. So you're going to take your layering dies. You're going to have your big layer and you've got the two dies here. I wish I could zoom in for you guys. I'm sorry, my camera is so wide. So you've got your two layers that you're going to cut. So the top one's going to be cut in white. The bottom one's going to be cut in your color. Then you're going to have your next layer, which is going to be about two more dies in. So I'm skipping out at least two dies there and then you've got your top layer and then we're going to skip again two or three layers and then I'm going to have those middle ones in there and then that way we're going to see our stamped image better so if you've got your dies to hand and you want to follow along then go ahead and cut out your layers so you're obviously going to want the smallest of each of those layers is going to be your white layer or your cream colored layer whatever you're going to stamp on that's what you're going to want to cut out in white so I've got my layers here ready to go. So I've cut those ones in white. And then your colored layer is going to be the larger of your dies. So put those aside. And so you're going to have your colored ones. I'm going to change it up and do a tealy kind of blue uh, for this second card. And we're going to change the direction of the card as well, just so you can see what kind of options you can get. Now let me just tuck these dies away because I can't edit this out my video like I would normally. We'll just chuck it to the side and hope I don't lose any of them. Right, okay, so we've got our layers here. What's really handy in this situation, and you don't have to have it, but what is handy is to have a removable adhesive. So I've got, oh, I'm missing all the comments again. I gotta remember to scroll down 105, wow. Yes, cellophane rips really easy, Teresa. It's really annoying. Um, so I've got this dot and dab, which is sort of the cheapest removable adhesive I could find. Sorry, I've had glue um, foam stickers stick to mine, so you can't really see it, but it's called dot and dab. And it's just a removable adhesive. They also do the regular one. And now I know these were on Craft Stash. I'm not sure if they're in stock at the moment or not, but they have the regular one as well, which is a pink. And that's the permanent one. But if you use a re removable adhesive, I can't even get my words out. Um, it's really nice for layering up your papers before you use it. If you haven't got it, but you've got one of those green Tombows, the green Tombow, I know you could put like a tiny drop of it down, let it dry, and then it acts as sort of like a removable adhesive. It, it becomes a bit tacky. It doesn't matter too much if your adhesive sticks to your card because we're gonna cover it up with our layers. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna layer up these um, layers, these white layers. So I'm going to just put a little strip of removable adhesive on the back. I'm going to aim for the middle and so that we've got a nice even border all the way around. And just stick it, whoop, so it can go a little bit wonky. Stick it down on there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of removable adhesive onto the back of that center one and stick it on there. So now we've got our layers layered up. And I don't know, can you guys see all right? Um, if I don't lift it to the screen, I can't tell if you can see all right. So I've layered those up. They're temporarily stuck together. I'm gonna move these out of the way so I don't muck those up. 
and we're going to start doing our stamping. So I'll get my ink pads out and ready. And so I've got, uh, oh man, verdant, or am I reading the wrong language? I think it's verdant is the green. And we've got warm breeze, morning mist, charming pink, monarch, and purple delight. So I'm going to use those colors today. I really like bright, vibrant colors. So that's what we're going to use on them. I'm going to stick the blues and the greens to the side because I'm going to use the leaves on that one. And I'm going to do my flowers in the purple. So again, I'm using this stamp set here, which has some lovely layers. And I won't use the um, big layers on them, but I will use the finer details <clears throat> in the centers of the flower. Let me just grab a drink because my throat's going a bit funny. Now, if this were Saturday night and we were crafting, this would definitely be a lovely shade of red and in a different kind of cup. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> magnetic sheets. Yeah, see, I like magnetic sheets for dyes, but I find they get very, very heavy. And then I have a really hard time with storage and stuff because it becomes so weighed down, if that makes sense. Okay, so to avoid me sticking my stamp in the wrong ink pad, I am just going to put my stamp into my ink pad and leave it there. And that's kind of my little trick to avoid any problems. So I'm just going to pick uh, random stamps. And then I've got a spare flower. So I've got four flowers. And I'm just going to use this one when we get towards the end. I like to start with the biggest stamp first to fill out the area. Let me just grab a bit of scrap paper. I've just got a scrap bit of coffee paper so I don't cover my desk in ink. Because I want to stamp off the edge. It gives it a more continual look uh, rather than being all kind of stuck in the middle. So I try and make sure I stamp off the edges and kind of make my way into the middle. So I'm going to go with my biggest stamp first um, and I'm going to just kind of start stamping around. Now don't stress if when you stamp you don't get all the way to the edge or you get a bit of a gap. That is fine. That is why we've got our layers. Our layers cover that up. So don't stress when you get that gap. Don't think panic mode and try and fix it because you've got to remember we've got about a quarter of an inch on our backing paper that's going to cover that right up so it's a really fun way of covering up blemishes as well if you haven't stamped it perfectly so I'm just going to add in a few of these darker pink or these lighter pink ones um, and I'll come in with some purple I'm trying to keep an eye on any comments I have to keep scrolling down it doesn't want to keep showing it um, ooh. Hang on, I nearly forgot something because what I really wanted to do on this one was have our card go this direction instead and I wanted to put the greeting on our front little strip. So let's stamp our sentiment on there first before we go and cover it in flowers. So I'm gonna use this stamp set here which is one of my favorites from Crafter's Companion and I'm using the Just For You. So the nice thing about the dies is when you wanna go and do a sentiment, you can take your die and I've lost the one that is the right size. Oh, here it is. And you can take your die and you can just kind of line it up over the top to make sure your stamp's going to fit in there just fine. So that's what I did beforehand was just found a sentiment that's going to fit inside there nicely. I'm going to take my VersaFine Black Onyx ink. This is my favorite ever black ink. It works so nice every time. I get a great result all the time. Ink it up. I'm going to aim for the middle and you might see my head, sorry. And just give it a nice firm press down so we've got just for you in the center I totally forgot about that bit because normally I like to do die cuts um, but that is a way you can step it up so if you want to keep it more basic let's keep it all to stamping oh sorry Christine Davies this is Sasha hang on I lost the picture that I showed you originally that went on the floor here I am here I am filming <laughs> So this is the last craft stash video I did. My husband took a picture of me when I was done. So there's me <laughs> with all my cards. <laughs> That's what you would see if you could see my head as well. Um, right. So I've got my just for you down there. Let's get some purple flowers on there. We can get nice and close to that sentiment now. Now the nice thing with the Versa Fine Claire inks is that they work with all kinds of stamps, but they are a pigment ink, so they do take a bit longer to dry, so you don't want to go and stick your finger in it accidentally, you'll smudge it. You also <laughs> um, want to make sure that when you're inking it up, 
it will stick to the ink pad a little bit. It kind of feels like it's got a bit of a suction to it because it's a thicker ink. So just be aware of that because the amount of times I've gone and done that and then pulled the ink pad and as I picked up my stamp, the ink pads flipped over onto my card. So just be aware if you're using pigment inks, it does look, it does stick to the um, stamp a bit. I'm going to come in with a few of these smaller ones. And what I might do before I fill up too much of the space is start to add my leaves as well. So I went and found a cardstock that sort of matched my ink um, color. Uh, again, this is from that Crafter's Companion set that has got the multiple kind of shades of each color, um, which I picked up on Craft Stash, but I think I looked the other day and I think they are all sold out of them. So I'm not sure if they're being made anymore or not, but it was a great um, little cardstock pack. Right, so I'm going to add in some of these leaves. See, I went, I've got that blob, but my backing should cover that up. You can see what I mean. I've missed a whole patch there. If you're using a stamp platform, then you can always go in a second time, but I found actually with our layers, you don't really need to worry about it too much. And let me scroll down in our comments to make sure I'm still watching. The comments are probably a bit delayed as well coming through. Never mind. Right, so I'm gonna add in some of these blue ones. I'm gonna make sure I always stamp off the edge of my paper and hold that ink pad while I'm um, inking up my stamp. I'm sorry if you can hear that noise when I'm moving around and it's my um, headphones rubbing against the table. It's really irritating, but I wasn't sure what else to do because having a headset on is much easier than a microphone to the side of me because then you kind of hear my voice going in and out. Right, I'm gonna use the green now and I'm gonna come in with some leaves. And the nice thing about clear stamps is you can see exactly where you're going and just stamp those in the middle there. Come in with this one over here. Just to kind of break up all those pinks and purples, just add in a bit of blues and greens and then that nice tealy kind of blue is gonna match really well with our cardstock. So just turn it around. Hello, Becky Wall. <laughs> Thank you. I've got so many lovely comments coming in about the color choices. I'm such an addict for <laughs> bright colors. I usually forget to kind of break out of that zone and do different colors. I tend to sort of get stuck with these sort of vibrant colors um, and then not use much else. Right, so I think that's enough of those kind of blues coming in there for now. I'm gonna come in with my smaller stamp and just kind of fill in some of those gaps. And it doesn't matter too much if you overlap your stamps, um, it's gonna be fine. But I'm trying not to overlap them, and, but I'm trying to fill in the gaps. The other great thing about this little stamp set that I love is that it comes with super duper small stamps. And I think I'll fill in a few of those gaps with those. So you get these little teeny ones here that are the same kind of style. So just pull one of those off. And I'll take that one off actually. And I have no idea if I'm like breathing really heavy into the mic. <laughs> Sometimes when I watch back my videos that I've gone and filmed, I just think, oh my word. Was I running a marathon while <laughs> stamping? There's heavy breathing going on. Right, you want to make sure you don't forget to cover up that center one with a few stamps as well. I'm going like that. Now, to clean my stamps, I usually just use a bit of water and a microfiber cloth. I've also got some stamp spray, um, which is for cleaning stamps as well. You can spray that on, but I just spray it onto my microfiber cloth and then just wipe it off and I've never had any issues. I used to buy stamping pads to try and scrub my stamps and they were such a pain to store. And basically I just chuck these in the wash um, with my clothes whenever I wash them um, or whenever I need to wash them and um, I've never had an issue and they work brilliantly for cleaning and not getting fuzz and not getting hairs or fluff because they're microfiber. You just don't get all the annoying um, extras from when you would have something like a baby wipe for example and then I feel like I'm doing better on the environment as well I'm not wasting so much <laughs> so if you see this giant blue thing that's all it is it's just a microfiber cloth right let's get some more of this purple going on and then I think we're gonna call it a day with all the flower stamping 
make sure I just I just want to cover up all this white you don't need to you can just do a few but I'm having so much fun now I'm well into it right let's see any comments <laughs> love the colors love the colors taking photos right okay so I'm gonna put the lids on those because I'm gonna put my sleeve in it if I don't so get those ones out the way because I'm done with my colors now and we'll just pop those to the side right so now we've got our stamping layer backgrounds done if we want to go ahead now we can add in some of those extra little centered bits so I'm gonna clean off that and take that off I'm gonna grab I don't know what the technical flower word is for these but I'm gonna go with these little fluffy bits <laughs> and we're gonna add those on um, I am so not a flower person I love stamping with them I love creating with them I don't really care for them <laughs> I never really bother with flowers so <laughs> I'm going to let you in on a secret and you're probably going to shame me and be really disgusted but if someone gives me flowers I leave the plastic on the flowers <laughs> and I just put them in the jug so I put them in a vase with the plastic still on because then that way when they start dying the plastic catches all the flowers and I can just put them all in the bin in one big bundle <laughs> oh I've had people come over and be like why are your flowers in plastic <laughs> yeah that's what I do I love creating with them but I tend to kill plants in real life. I don't do so well with them. Oh, I'm waiting for all the comments now to tell me off for doing that because um, I think my mother-in-law finds that quite appalling as well. <laughs> she's a huge flower person and she's got the most beautiful garden and works really hard on it. Um, but I just, I just don't do flowers. I don't know. It's never been, um, it's never been that exciting for me. You know, give me chocolate any day. Oh yes, that's the way to Sasha's heart chocolate and ink and stamps right I'm just adding some of these fluffy bits to the centers of the flowers now these dark purple ones you're obviously not going to see the gray because it's a darkish gray and that's where I'm going to come in with the white ink pad the white ink pad is great for that it kind of just lightens it it doesn't really make it look too white but it kind of just adds a little bit of a pop in there and we don't need to do all of them um, you can just do as many or as few as you like and again if it doesn't do very well over the edge don't stress because we've got those layers coming in okay so move all that to the side before I put my fingers in any of it and we can take that off so there's our stamped card now I'm hoping I don't go and smudge it because I didn't think to bring a heat gun in and I also don't like to use a heat gun um, on my videos because it's very loud <laughs> so I'm just going to let me get rid of these ink pads because I will stick my hand in them where's the lid there it is so hopefully it's dried enough all you have to do is just pop it off because it's got the removable adhesive on there and then we're just going to layer them up now I've ripped to that but that doesn't matter at all because we're going to back it with our blue layers so I'm going to bring in those blue layers um, and I'm just going to use some liquid glue I find liquid glue the easiest because you can wiggle it around and shift it you could use tape runner um, tear tape whatever you've got to hand I just like using liquid glue because it gives me that bit of wiggle time to get it nice and centered on my layers so I'm going to go ahead and stick that on there and hopefully not smudge anything I'm just going to scroll down the comments and see. <laughs> oh, yes. I think I'm going to have to treat myself with some chocolate. Um, Corrine, is that how we say it? Corrine Covalet has said I should treat myself with some chocolate. Now, my favorite thing is around this time of the year, you get the giant Reese's peanut butter cups, but they're like in the Easter egg format. And usually, for whatever reason, the Easter egg ones seem to be imported from the States. So I have found them in Asda, and I have found them in Tesco's, and Aldi had them last week. And they've got the American, like if you look on the back, if there's a sticker covering up the, um, the ingredients, that's how you can tell it's been imported from a different country. So 
I love the ones from the States. For whatever reason, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups in the States just seem so much creamier than the ones that are made in the UK. Um, and so I love going and getting those giant Easter egg ones. And I think I'm going to have some of those when I'm done. I've like stockpiled them. My husband rolled his eyes massively. But then I've got two little monsters that nick all my chocolate anyway. So I've got to buy loads and got to buy extra because we need to make sure we've always got plenty, right? We need that chocolate around. Right, here we go. So the layers are all layered up now. I've got them all stuck down. I've also gone ahead, and I forgot to tell you this, and cut my card base. So what I did was I measured out what this die was here, um, and then I worked out that I needed a five by seven card base, and I cut that myself uh, from scratch. <laughs> I can see the, the uh, messages coming in now. <laughs> <laughs> telling me off for my flowers <laughs> okay so I'm going to stick those down onto my card base that's a five by seven which fits this backing one really nice with a little border if you can see what I mean now you want to make sure your card is facing the right direction so that we don't have an oopsie and put our card on upside down and all we have to do now is just layer them up but you want to make sure you're matching your flowers from your previous pattern. Now this can be done, be done multiple ways. You can stick some foam dots under there and kind of layer it dimensional in height. You can take this opportunity to add some ribbon in. So on my purple version here, I added in some ribbon around under just underneath that top layer. Um, you could add in um, different um, different things like twine if you wanted to. This is kind of the step where you're going to decide what you kind of want to do. I'm just going to glue it all down as one layer and keep it as basic as possible. So you can see the very basic version. And I do remember at the end of this, I've got some other versions to share with you as well to show you how you can step it up a bit more. Right, so we've got to make sure our flowers are on the right side. And then you just kind of line up your pattern and give it a bit of a wiggle into the right place and give it a nice firm press. So you saw there was that big gap just there. It's nice and covered up by our background now so we don't see that massive gap. Let me scroll down the comments again. Um, oh, the Reese's Christmas trees. Yes, I do stock up on those as well. <laughs> um, there's a comment mentioning those are really good. They are also usually imported from the States as well, which is really fun. Okay. Um, let's turn that one around that way. I just nearly had a panic because I didn't remember lining up my um, card base right, but we've not stuck it down yet. Hang on, what's going on here? Yeah, thought we were missing something, but it was just a little flower, so it wouldn't show up underneath that edge anyways. Right, so we've got our layers all glued together, and it, you get this really cool dimensional kind of look, if that's the right word. Right, I'm going to stick this one onto the card base now. I've got my card base already facing the right way, so I don't need to make sure that I've got that in the right direction. Apply some glue on there. I like a lot of glue. <laughs> I like to make sure my cards aren't going to fall apart. Although this is also very thinly spread on there, so I don't get it seeping out the sides. But I like a lot of glue all over my card, nice and thin. Um, <laughs> I have some friends sometimes comment on my excessive glue use. <laughs> Never mind, it all comes out my pocket anyways. Right, so stick that on the base, and there's our card. So now we've got this really cute card. It's nice and flat. It will pop in the post really easily. If you've got some gems, you could add on some gems. I've got these enamel dots. So I just kind of went through my stash, found some enamel dots that are in roughly the right colors. And we can go ahead and pop some of those on there. So I find my pokey tool because I can't ever get these off very well. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick a few of those in some of the white gaps near some of the colors that they kind of match with. They're not an exact match, but I don't mind. I think it kind of adds just a little bit more to your card. And I've got some green ones as well. Stick some green ones on there. I hope everyone is doing well. I think we've got enough time now. I've got sort of half an hour still. So I think we've got enough time that I could do the more stepped up version 
and share with you another card if you're happy with that. Let me know in the little comments if you'd like me to do another one because I have got it cut and prepped and ready and so I could do another one for you. Stick these on. Da -da -da. And that down on there. Might add in a few more later on but that just kind of adds a little bit more color and a little bit more something to the card. So that is the basic version of doing a triple layered card. Let me show you some of the other ways you can do um, this technique and then I'll take another look at the time and make sure we've got enough time to do another one. Right, oh, so let me put those two together. So as you can see, I added a ribbon onto this one. I added on um, some uh, word die cuts that's from the creative range as well so I'm pretty sure that's included in the sale if you wanted to buy oh they're down here if you wanted to buy um, some creative products and get the free stamp set so that's from these ones here um, you get the sentiment special occasions and family favorites so the sent uh, is it this one this one so the family favorites is my favorite one because it comes with happy birthday, thank you, just for you, new home, thinking of you. Um, it's got all those ones in, which are the common ones that I would use. The special occasions ones has got with sympathy, best wishes, new baby, retirement, more kind of specific ones, if that makes sense. But there's the two there to choose from. Um, and that's what I used on here. I layered up the purple twice. Um, the purple writing, happy birthday twice, and then back down to some holographic card. So that is the way you could kind of step it up to go from very basic to a bit more. All right, let me scroll through. Oh my gosh, there's lots of comments now. I missed a whole bunch. Uh, chocolate. <laughs> more chocolate talk. Okay, so just going to make sure I'm not missing any comments from anyone. And then... Ah, yes, please. I was like, why is everyone saying yes? I already forgot that I asked you a question. Oh, dear. Okay, let me share with you some of the other versions. So if you've got a layering tag set, you could then go ahead and you could make a layered tag. So these are the layering tags from the creative range. Now for this one, I just chopped off the bottom of the brown version because you got quite a lot of bulk going on at the bottom because I wanted that top edge to be flush. So this is just three layers here, um, two with the normal cardstock that I stamped on. And then I added in some, it's really hard to tell, but I added in some glitter pen on there as well, some brown glitter pen onto the leaves to kind of make it blingy a bit. And I distressed the edges a bit and then added some twine twine ribbon and twine onto it so that's kind of how you could dress up a tag and do that same kind of effect but with less layers um, and something that you could put on a gift then you can go with the same concept but you could use rectangles and squares so this is one I did with Lou's butterfly so this is the textures butterfly um, and I just took one big image and stamp that across the three panels and then I took some of the cosmic shimmer uh, sparkle powders I think they're called um, because I'm addicted to those kind of things and I just sprayed some water on and chucked those on the top of that um, and then I glued them all together and there's a bit of dimension here because I've got foam dots behind this square and then I used the wonderful which I didn't bring the dyes into the house uh, but there are um, some word dies from Lou Collins uh, from her textures range and I did wonderful and I backed it three times twice on black and once on the holographic so you can kind of do it that way as well and change up the direction of your uh, layers then you can take multiple shapes and you can stick them all together so I've got circle rectangle and square and I just layered them up and stuck them all onto one card. You can come in with a bit of bling on this. You could leave it as it is and have it a bit more flat. The squares popped up with some dimension. And again, this is using the same stamp set that I've just shared with you. So again, that's this one here. And I used the one in a million stamp from there as well. And I did go ahead and use the more outlined dies, um, stamps for this 
stamps to that this card oh my gosh I keep thinking oh i'll just edit that out later <laughs> stuttering my words that doesn't work on the live okay so the card that i thought we could make and we'll make a slightly different version is this one here so this is using the octagons or hexagons let me pull it out never get it right octagons <laughs> so that's using that one there um, and a holographic card underneath. I used a different stamp set. I used a butterfly stamp set and went for some oranges and yellows on there um, and did some background stamping. So for this one, the way you can step it up is to do the whole entire thing. So we're stamping on all the layers, um, the back base, card base as well. So to cut your card base is quite simple and I'll share that with you in just a second. I've also added in some gems and then there's the just for you, but without the backing of the um, the shadow die, there we go. The shadow die went all the way along and I wanted it to kind of go down that way so I just didn't use the shadow die, I just used the words on this one. So this is the one I thought we could make right now and we'll do it in just slightly different colors. So again, the same, same steps as the first time, you're going to go ahead and pick out your dies and you want them to have a little bit, I mean, for this technique, it doesn't really overly matter to be honest, to have that more space between the size dies. So on this one, we're layering directly on top. So you need to make sure you've got a gap so you can see the stamping on the white card. For this one, because we're staggering where they're going, they could all be the same size if you wanted. Um, they could be, you know, super big and super small. It doesn't really matter because they're all going staggered around each other, if that makes sense. You just need to make sure you've got two that are next in line to each other. So I've gone ahead and pre-cut out, I've got my white card stock ready to go and I've got some pink foil as my backing layers. So I went ahead and picked out some dies. I wanted to keep them sort of small because I didn't want it coming off the card. Then for the actual card, all I did was took a piece of A4 card stock. I folded that card stock in half and when you run this through your die cutting machine, all you need to make sure to do is to just stick one of the edges. Let me grab a piece of card. I did. Sorry, I should be showing you this and not telling you it because it makes more sense if you see it. So you can take your A4, fold it right in half, take your die, place it on top of your cardstock, and you're going to just stick your die ever so slightly over that edge. So you can see there's a gap there. It will not cut if that is over your edge. So this is my crease and I'm going to put the die just over the edge and then I would tape that in place and run it through my Big Shot. And this one here will fit through a standard Big Shot die. Sorry, a standard Big Shot machine, but it does go up to eight by eight. So the biggest one, you will need a Big Shot um, plus four or another die cutting machine that is A4 rather than an A5. So you'd run that through your die cut machine like that. It leaves that edge exposed so it doesn't get cut. And what you're left with is your card base in the same shape as your dies that are going on the top. So we've got this card base here and it's still joined. And we can go ahead and start decorating that. Let me just make sure there's no questions coming in <laughs> because it's not scrolling down for me. So carry on, carry on, carry on. I'm not seeing any questions, but I'm getting lovely comments and I'm so appreciative of all your lovely, lovely comments. And yes, I love this pink foil as well. How fun is that? It's the matted kind of foil, so it's not super duper shiny. So this time we're gonna work out where we want them to go. Now when you're kind of planning it, it might be a bit helpful to have your backing layered on there just to kind of see where you're going because if you don't put them on, you might end up too close to the edge. For example, if I put this one just as close as that to the edge, by the time I put my backing on, it's now hanging off the edge of the card. So just be mindful that this layer here has got about a quarter of an inch extra to go. So all you're going to do is take your removable adhesive. I'm going to try and speed this up a bit because we've got 15 minutes. Um, and just place down your pieces where you want them to end up going. Ooh, that was a bit squeaky. Might be getting low on this. <laughs> and I'm going to go for all the same direction and stick these down. 
put that one nice and close and oh no we don't want it too close because we've got that edge to bind see i'm already forgetting uh, let's bring that one let's just stick it over there right so now we've got them all on there you could use a stamp platform or use your stamps if you've got them so i'm going to quickly get out my um inks again oh i wanted to do a background stamp didn't i so i've got my really really light gray and now i've got this um apple blossom floral mandela now the downside is i forgot that i was going to do this and i didn't bring in a stamp block big enough to hold it so if it goes a bit skew pretend you've got a stamp platform and you've done it with that because i'm just going to have to make do and do it on here so i'm just going to ink up that mandela stamp all i want to do is add a bit of interest to the back of my card and just have like a really nice light gray so i'm just going to kind of press that down pretending i've got a stamp block behind here or a stamp platform and then i've just got that hint of a background i don't know if the camera's picking it up very well i've just got a very little hint subtle hint of a floral mandela on there right i was going to do a bit more but i don't trust myself and i'm running out of time so we're going to close that lid up and put that to the side um this pink uh foil card stock is <laughs> i can't remember the name of it now it came in as like a it was called like the mermaid bundle or something and it came with a whole bunch of these kind of bright colors in it um i will post in the comments later what the brand is but it's um i think it might be deco craft um i think um really nice cheap and cheerful pink foil okay so i've done my little background image there i'm going to try and find my ink pads oh they're right in front of me <laughs> that's bad that's terrible oh goodness okay now i know that this big flower came from there so we're just going to start going again and again i'm just going to stamp around i want to have a nice floral image as kind of like a focal point kind of in the middle so I'm just gonna stick that one in the middle and maybe we'll add in those little details now my husband did say he should be able to get the kids if I can't however I don't want to risk it too much um, <laughs> and not be prepared if I do need to go and get them because he's also in a meeting upstairs uh, in my son's bedroom <laughs> so Right, let's stamp in a few of these. I'm going to do less of them just because of time. Oh, where's my piece of paper here? Just in case I want to go off. Actually, I think I'll keep all the flowers on the card this time. And let's go with, I think we'll just stick with the green. And we'll just do the green. And I'll try and get the leaves coming off the flower a little bit as well so it kind of looks like they're joined up and not just floating all over the place let's stick that in there uh which brand is the flower mandela oh sorry that's apple blossom is the um flower mandela i think this is still available or floral mandela sorry i think it might still be available on craft stash um right let's get some more of these on Oh, and then the other thing we should mind is that I have not die cut out a sentiment, which I thought I would do for this flower, but I forgot. <laughs> right, there we go. I stamped over the top of that. So let's go with a little sentiment on the actual card before we cover up too much of it. And I've lost my stamp set again. Right. Let's see. I might do... We've got thank you for all you do. Let's use that. That looks great. And I'll take that off of there. And hopefully this will fit on there. Where's my black ink gone? Over here. So I'm gonna stamp on our sentiment. Now, the only issue is I should have stamped this before I layered it because now I've got the bulk of the layer being under it. So we'll hope for the best and just stick it on and uh, hope it stamps nice and solid. Yay! <laughs> oh, breathe a sigh of relief right let's get this purple in there and then we'll call it a day on our stamping we'll keep it nice and simple take that off and we'll put that one on right we've got 10 minutes 
stamp that down. A couple purple ones on there. And we'll close those up in a minute. Right, let's add in a bit more to the middle. Where is it? There we go. See, I'm getting all stressed out and flustered. So I'm misplacing where I'm putting my stuff. Let's uh, let's stick the centers on the big one. And we'll give that a quick clean. I hope everyone's having a really good afternoon. It is sunny here, which is so nice because it started out really overcast and quite chilly. So I am loving the sun at the moment. I cannot wait for it to get warm enough though. It's still a bit too chilly for my liking. All right, let's go with the gray again and we'll add on the gray into the center. Now you do have to line these up and I'm not gonna really bother too much <laughs> because I'm a bit short on time. So we're just gonna hope for the best and um, I'm sure it'll look fine anyways. Stamp that on there and stamp that one on there. Got a little bit more character to those flowers. I might come in and add a bit more later on. So scrolling down the comments to make sure. Okay, yes, the Versafine Clara ink pads are fantastic. They do stay nice and juicy. The only downside is finding the refills in this country is really difficult. It is not easy to find. Um, when I was at home in Canada, I did manage to get some, but they were like 10 quid for a refill. So they're, or $10, sorry, I should say $10. So they weren't overly cheap. Um, but they do work so beautifully well. Right, I'm going to close this up because I'll stick my hand in it. Now we're going to do the same thing again, and we're just going to start layering it up. So peel these off, and then we'll just line them up. I can see my ink is still wet, so I'm trying to avoid touching the centers of those. All right, grab my glue. Quickly, 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 quickly. The downside with foil is that um, it can be a bit too slippy slidey with your glue because it takes a bit longer for it to adhere on there. So we'll hopefully get it stuck down and have it not go too slippy slidey or curl back up. Stick that down. One. Power crafting, power crafting. Here we go. This is what I've been trying to do on my YouTube channel is trying to do some when you only have half an hour videos because a lot of us end up with a bit of rushed time or we, we think we can't craft because we haven't got enough time in our day. And I think it's really important that when you even have just the smallest bit of time, sometimes it can be really good to just take that mental health break and sit down and do a bit of creativity. So even if it's just making some backgrounds for yourself or really quick and simple cards or doing some things like you could die cut all this when you've got time and prep it all and then you could sit down and figure out what kind of stamps you want to put on it at a later date and time. Right, I'm getting ink. <laughs> splotches you can come in with a sand eraser so you if you go to any kind of stationery shop you know like B&M even sells them you can pick up those erasers that have the pink on one end and blue on the other and the blue end is a sand eraser so you can just come in and um, erase it with that blue end and it takes ink marks right off which is really nice okay so the other important thing to remember when you're doing this is to remember which order you put your stamps down in so are your layers in because you don't want to go and glue it on and then realize that actually that layer this one here came before <laughs> the other one so just remember what you're doing there right I'm gonna pop up the other ones no I'm not I'm not gonna pop them up with foam because I didn't bring any foam tape in right we're just gonna go with a lower layer on this one I just want to make sure I don't think did I layer these over top of each other I don't think I did did I how did that one go like that? Okay, so I would add some foam stickers or foam tape behind this, but I forgot that in my office. So we're just gonna go flat and just stick it down, wiggle it into place, make sure it's nice and straight. Right, and then the top one, go on there. And then obviously we can bling it up with any gems that you may have in your stash. Um, anything else? Oh, look, the purple is not dry. <laughs> Smudging the purple. Um, and I managed to overlap my layers, even though I told you, be mindful that it gets a bit thicker. So that's kind of the card. You can't see my mandala very well because I did it really light, but you can definitely see all my fingerprints from where I rushed this too much. So don't rush it if you're using pigment ink. 
But that kind of is how this card is finished off. And if you did it with more time and more patience and some foam, then you could get one that looks like that. <laughs> so that is the end of my craft along with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I really hope you learned something new. Uh, it didn't bore you too much. Um, and I hope you get out those layering dies and get using them. If you haven't got layering dies, then there is the offer on at Craft Stash where if you spend 20 or 30 pounds, I can't quite remember, then you can get the free stamp set, um, which is the one I used today. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so disorganized. So that's the offer on at the moment. Um, anything from the creative range, I believe. Um, any creative layering dies. I think the words are included in there. And you can get the stamp set for free. So thank you so much for joining me today. I will go back through all the messages, make sure I've not missed any uh, questions. And when I get back from the school run, I will then add in um, the brand and the name of the foil card that I used on these cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye.